Hey guys, this is Mr. C. And in this video, we're gonna be showing you how to graph some absolute value functions and some translations and some transformations of those functions. So uh, first of all, when we talk about absolute value function, as we learned in class, the absolute value function is a V-shape. And if it's just f of x, I'm gonna write this up here, f of x or y is equal to absolute value of x, if that's what we need to graph right there, that graph is what we call a parent function. It's always going to be the same. And all of the absolute value functions we're going to graph are based upon this, this uh, parent function. And all we're going to do is slide it left, right, up, down, and maybe flip it or widen it or narrow it. So if you just have absolute value of x, as we've already talked about, if this is your origin right here, the vertex is on the origin, then you're going to go over one, up one, again, and again, and again. And it's gonna make somewhat of a line with a slope of one. So if we go ahead and connect those dots, it's really a ray, then that's what we have for this side. Now the other side is identical, except its slope is gonna be negative one. And if you get into some upper level classes, they're going to go into this in more detail as to actually what the absolute value function is if you express it as a piecewise function. But for right now, we're just gonna take it kind of simple like this. We graph this part. I almost got up to that last stop, but that's okay. And it's your classic V shape, and that's what the absolute value functions look like. They're a V shape, all right? So what we're gonna do is now, we're going to look at some examples of some absolute value functions. And this might clarify some questions you might have. The first one we have is the absolute value of x minus two. That minus two right there, what that's gonna do is take your parent function and it's gonna slide it two units and you would think it would go this way because your brain wants that negative two to go backwards. But in actuality, that negative two moves it forwards. And the reason being is because this is a function and when you unwrap everything, you're, you're gonna have to eventually get a positive two on the other side. So what happens is your x values are all going to be slid two units over to the right. Now, the beautiful thing is if you made a table of values of this function, all of these dots I'm going to put on here, all these points, will be solutions of that function right there, all the ordered pairs. So you have in front here just a 1. And even though it's not there, it's a 1. What that means is your sides, your rays, are not going to change at all. It's going to be over 1, up 1 over and over again until you get to the end. And then this side, over one, up one, backwards. And that's what gives you that slope of negative one over here. So if you notice, I ran out of, out of room over here because my graph is kind of limited. This side, I'm gonna get more, and that's very common. So now, like we always should do, use a straight edge, not your finger. Graph that ray, and graph this ray, and there's our function right there. The next example, and I'm gonna actually go over here to this one because that's how I arranged it, even though it says number four, just disregard that. On this one, this function is being moved four units, but which way, left or right? Well, that plus four is actually going to be opposite, and it's gonna actually go back four units. One, two, three, four, and the vertex is now gonna be right here. But again, I just have a one in front, so it's not gonna widen or narrow. It's gonna be the same exact pattern as the last one. And you're gonna graph your dots and graph these over here and then take a straight edge. All right, and as good as you can get it. Everybody likes to see straight lines, not crooked ones. And there's your graph. So I'm gonna go down to this one now. This one is appearing to be a little more complicated because you have this X minus three and a minus two here. So it's gonna get slid left and right and it's gonna get pushed up or down depending on these two numbers. This one says X minus three. Well, that minus three what we've learned is not back here. It's actually right there. That minus two is gonna take that and drop it down two units. Why? Because when you subtract two over here, all your y values are going to automatically 
be deducted two units. They're all automatically gonna be going down or subtracted two units. So where it used to be here, now it is going to be here. All right, and if you don't believe me, make a table of values and all of the points I'm about to get will be solutions of this function right here. All right, again, we have a one in front. So we just go up one over one to the right, back one up one to the left, Okay, we take a straight edge, make it look good. Add one there. And you know I'm somewhat of a perfectionist. And there that one is right there. All right, let's look at our next, next example right here. This one has an X plus three and then a plus one right there. I always do this first. Uh, that plus three, as we've learned, is gonna push it actually back three units. One, two, three, and that plus one is gonna push it up one unit. So your new vertex is gonna be right here at negative three comma one. Again, you can plug that order pair in here, negative three comma one, and you're gonna get, or if you plug in negative three for X, you're gonna get negative one as your output. So, I mean positive one, I'm sorry, positive one. So uh, we're gonna go over one, up one. Okay, and what allows me to do that? Again, there's just a one right here, so it's not being stretched or compressed. All right. Now, graph the rays, and we're gonna graph these, and there's that graph right there. So, um, I wish it would stop there, but it usually doesn't. So, if you get one like this one, this one has a couple things going on. First of all, it has a minus one here, which is gonna push the vertex forward one unit. That minus four is gonna drop it down four. That two is not gonna have anything to do with the vertex. It's either going to make the graph wider or it's gonna make it narrower. And since that number is a number bigger than one, it's gonna make it narrower. So my X minus one pushes it to the right one, down four, right there should be my vertex. Again, if you have any doubt, always plug in your order pairs back in and make sure that they are solutions. All right, now the two comes into play. That two means I used to go over one, up one, but now all these values are being doubled. So I'm actually gonna go over one, up two instead. And I'm gonna have to do it again. Okay, all the way up to the top. So as we look at this, it's a line that's a little steeper. So what happens is that number right there for absolute value functions is actually going to be an increase by this amount in the slope of this line and of this ray and then this one when I graph that one. So this one, let me go ahead and be a good mathematician here and got that one. Go back one up to I make mistakes just like everybody else, so I'm real careful, usually. And there's this side. Okay, so this one did make it narrow, did make it narrower than say this one, and we can clearly see that. On the last example I have, okay, and we see the fraction there, so we immediately get frightened. Now that's not going to be a big deal. We're first going to deal with the x plus 2. That's going to push it two units or slide the two units to the left, opposite, and then up one. So left two, up one. Here's my new vertex. Okay, now that one half is going to cut all of my previous y values in half. So it used to go over one, up one, right? But now I'm going to have to go over one, up one half instead. Over and over again. And as we see, if we keep doing this, we're eventually gonna get a slope of this ray that has a slope of one half. And so it's gonna make it wider. So without getting into all the terminology of stretches and compressions, if we think of this number as a number that is gonna be affecting the Y values, it makes it a little easier to understand because we can see that that is what's going to happen. This one on this side, is a mirror image 
of the right hand side. I just can't fit as many dots in, points to be technical. And then graph that side and we're done. So guys, that was a little short video on how to graph some absolute value functions. Uh, like and share and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks guys, see you later.